class, and then we'll take some questions. Yeah, I'm super excited about the class. Super excited we covered all our positions. I and mean, we've got from offense to skilled offense, linemen to tight ends to D-line to linebackers. We, we basically have a, almost a 22-man roster. We may be a safety short, although I think there's a couple kids that can maybe play back there uh, alongside Tyree. So we could fill a pretty good. I think it bounced, starting to really balance our roster. It's been a three-year process to get our, our scholarships allocated and have the numbers that we look for with the schemes we run on offense and defense and everybody's different. Um, I, there's still a couple spots that we still have to grow uh, positionally, but we're getting pretty close. Um, there's some balance and there's some ready-made players. I think there's some players physically that can come in and compete right in, and they're going to help us right away. I still think we're at the point where we need that. I'm hopeful this is the last year where we need young guys to come in and play the major roles that we've witnessed the last two years, and particularly last year, all those kids getting kind of thrown to the wolves and playing Division One football. And then I think the other kids that aren't maybe as physically ready are the kids that we've made hay with through the years are either longer kids uh, that their f body hasn't grown into their great frames or their strength hasn't grown in, but they have a huge upside. You know, there's some rawness to them. Uh, in their physical maturity, there may be some rawness to their game, but their upside is off the charts. And we've made hay for years and years, whether it be uh, my years at Grand Valley or even at Notre Dame. We took some kids at Notre Dame even that were underappreciated because they hadn't hit their stride. And then when they hit their stride, uh, they became great, great, great college football players. So we, we have a good eye for kids that there's some other, other coaches are looking for always finished products, and we're not. And we've had a great amount of success, and we have a pretty good idea what that kid looks like. And, and I think we have some kids that maybe will be lower in the class next year compared to the other freshmen, but maybe by their third and fourth years or the kids, they might pass everybody up because they're when they do get it all put together, they're, they're going to be tremendously talented players. So we improved our size greatly, improved our strength greatly, particularly some of our linemen are more physically and linebackers are more physically. They're throwing around some serious weights already. So when Hark gets them and gets them rolling, they don't have as far to go. And they have already, you know, we got some 300 plus offensive linemen, so they don't, they're, they're not coming in at 270 and saying, hey, we got to put 25, 30 pounds of muscle, which our first class, they were all that way. They're almost all tight ends. If you remember, 235 pound tight ends, we're trying to make old linemen out of, but that's what you get when you take over a job in January. And some of those kids are becoming great players for us, but it was more of a process. And then, you know, last year and this year, we're getting more more kids that are closer physically to being able to compete. And then our skill kids are easier to compete out there. And I think we got some skill kids that can compete right now. Coach, I know it's uh, probably been a crazy last 24 hours, just sort of in a general sense without the, necessarily the specifics and everything. Uh, were there many flips, surprises, things like that? Uh, it seems like that sort of thing is fairly common uh, nowadays with uh, football. Yeah, and in, in how we recruit makes it less common for us, but we're not immune to it. Um, a lot of places pressure kids, tell them that they got – 24 hours to make a decision, tell them they got to decide. They, kids will tell you, well, I was really pressured on my visit back last May to commit. Uh, there's also a lot of kids that get excited about gimmicks and they get caught up in the moment. And then when they settle back and they think about what did I really commit to? Did I commit to a gimmick or did I commit to something that was real? We have less kids that waver because we're so straightforward and honest. And a lot of people do it our way. A lot of people do it the other way. Um, so we have less kids that are jumping ship, that are questioning what they got themselves into because whether they committed last January or even the kid we got committed last week from Philly, they know exactly what they're getting themselves into. All right, we did lose a kid late, which happens to get some multiple BCS offers and decided that was a better opportunity. And we don't, we don't begrudge kids of that. Are you disappointed when kids don't? honor their verbal commitment yeah there's always a disappointment but we always say here like we want kids that want to be here so if they if if you're having doubts you're not the right guy for Miami you're not the right guy for us so we also got got into some hefty battles late with some BCS programs which um 
we didn't necessarily win any of those late ones, but the fact that we're battling a Big Ten school and a Pac-10 school and an ACC school for some top recruits, and we got some coaches that as great a class as we feel like we got. We got some coaches that left the building today, and they're not very happy because they we lost a couple late battles, and it's it's almost comical that with where we're at as a program and our record the last few years that we think we can beat BS, BCS schools. We know that's going to be a possibility here in a couple of years when we get this thing rolling, that it's going to be way more realistic. But the fact you're coming off a two and three and a zero win season and you think you can go beat BCS kids, that just shows about what our recruiters do, how good our assistant coaches are, but also shows the power of Miami, what Miami can offer kids. Coach, when you first arrived, it was kind of hard to talk about depth but I know that is something uh, that you wanted to develop as you went along. How do you feel you're coming along in that process, and how important is depth to compete on uh, within the Mid-American Conference? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's important for the long season, as you just alluded to, not just a Mid-American Conference, but through the non-conference, and it just, it's a long year, and football's a grueling sport. It, it's really important for competition, you know, I told the guys my first January meeting, it's, it's finally on at Miami. Because I used to look and say, we're not getting enough out of you. And I look to go to make a normal move. Like if you don't feel like a kid's giving you maybe everything he has, you kind of look to make the next move. But the kid behind him was giving me less, and the kid behind him was giving him less, and the kid behind him I didn't even want to look at. So for me, it creates a depth to withstand the long season, but it also creates a competition that all great teams have that you can't take your foot off the gas, whether you're the starter or the backup. Like, you now look behind you. When I got here, the few guys that, that really adequately could play at this level and could compete, they looked behind them, and it really didn't matter. There's no way their game could sink to the point where they were going to get beat out. Now they're going to look behind them, and there's going to be like, okay, I'm better than him. That's why I'm ahead of him, and I'm more experienced than him, but I better keep working because that kid's coming, and he wants my spot. And now you add this class, it's going to be okay, and now the third kid in line <laughs> – is all of a sudden he's capable too. Now he doesn't know what he's doing yet, and he should never beat me out because of my experience and my being older and stronger and wiser, but I better keep working. So you create that competition through spring ball and that competition through fall camp that every really good program needs to have, and we just haven't had that, and this is going to be really the first spring we say, listen, you're not performing at the level, or in our case a lot of times it's not, not effort, but it's execution, it's that mental focus. Well, we're just going to go to plan B because there actually is a plan B. And we may even have some plan Cs, which, again, good programs have and bad programs end up dealing with certain kids that you really don't want to deal with as a football player because it's what you have. It's, it's your best opportunity. And, and that depth is going to be so critical to us making the next step as a football program. Coach, um, with all this, you, you, you get instant feedback from people about your recruiting class from fans. What are you hearing? What have you been hearing today uh, from Twitter, uh, yeah. phone calls, yeah. uh, whatever? It's been going on for months. And really the biggest feedback you get is from the high school coaches. And I went on this journey the last two months of all these home visits, and I've been all over the Midwest, you know, from Ohio to Michigan to Indiana, Illinois to St. Louis, you know, to Minnesota, and then also been down in Georgia. And the first thing I hear about is, the caliber of players that we're recruiting, the caliber of players that are interested in Miami and how great a job my assistant coaches do, you know, and why their kids are so excited to come play at Miami because your assistant coaches are not only doing a better job recruiting, but they are really promoting Miami and what Miami can do for this kid and also the type of person that you and your staff are are the type of people that we want our kids around. And so there's a buzz. I went in Chicago, there's a buzz. I went in Columbus, there's a buzz. I went in Cincinnati, there's a buzz. I went in Kentucky, there's a buzz. I went in Indianapolis, there's a buzz. Even down in Georgia, they're getting to know Miami football. Like, hey, you're getting some great kids out of this area, and we're really excited you guys are coming down there. And because of the quality of visits we have and the quality of job our assistants are recruiting, whether we get them or not, word of mouth is obviously so powerful in all professions, and our profession is no different that, there, you know, there's a bunch of kids we had last year at junior day that 40 of them went to BCS schools, but they all went back to their high school and talked about how great Miami was and how great the staff is. And that's part of the process of changing the perception of our football program and changing the perception of Miami for those of the people that don't know Miami.
you know so it's there there is quite a buzz and it's not just the internet people which are are promoting and writing a lot of great things about about our staff and, and the job they're doing on the road recruiting and the caliber athletes are going after. I mean, literally, we had five battles with BCS schools the last two weeks, and I'm literally getting irritated we're not winning them. And then I'm like laughing, like, who the heck do we think we are? Like, you know, like this is hey, we're we're in this major battle. He's not even talking to any Mac schools but us, you know. And last time I checked, the one loss records. If anybody should be battling BCS people, it probably shouldn't be Miami at this point, but that's where we're headed. Was, was there any one recruit that almost had you cracking a bottle of champagne that you got him? Uh, no, I just – I just we have great bouncers class. There's like – somebody asked me this morning, who's the guys you really like on that board? And I, he's like, you just about named every one of them. I said, yeah, they're all – you know, some are going to be more ready physically, but there's there's – there's a lot of kids that, you know, and I always just say, hey, if you don't blame me, pop on their tapes and go to huddle and watch your high school, type in their name and type huddle behind them, and you can watch them all instantaneously. And um, and a lot of them are multi-sport athletes and great in the second sport and very, very, very high-end competitive kids, and they're super confident, which is the one thing when you meet this class, and last class was confident, but this class is – equally if not more confident ability and all of us that have been around great athletes know that that's one of the number one things you better be looking for is confidence and if you lack some confidence it's going to be very difficult to play division one in any sport doesn't matter name the sport it's just hard to compete at this level uh, looking at the position groups see where you've got uh, four dbs and uh, uh, five wide receivers uh, suffice it to say that uh, the passing game is a, is a big thing in the, in the Mid American Conference and uh, a big part of your program too. Yeah, and just you know we we have depth issues at corner, you know, and we we lose we lose one corner and we don't we didn't have many in our program, so that was that was an area where you really felt like we don't have a ton of wideouts right now. I think we got like eight wideouts going to spring camp, which if you're going to play three or four wideouts at different times, we needed to add to that number. Um, so those were those were areas, you know. If you say kids, I don't think Tay Gowan and Trey Banks are necessarily better than any of the other recruits. When you said like crack champagne, I just think they're a pretty high position and need for us. And not that I don't think we have some good young corners in our program, but we don't, and we're barely too deep at corner. The the volume, you know, and just getting two young kids that are as talented genetically as those two kids are, at a position where I know we gotta. We got to play a lot better football at corner. We were it was it was bad. Um, where we had other positions that we weren't playing winning football, but we weren't close at that position. Anybody that watched this play, I got almost weekly messages from fans complaining about our corner play, and I was like, ah, thanks for the news flash. Like, can you come up with something that the you know the whole world doesn't see that we're we don't make many plays in the ball and we give up plays like I got it. So we, we have some younger kids that we like, but we, we have a lot of work to do at a lot of positions, but getting those two young corners and get, you know, when we, when we got them committed last summer, I would have, I would have, I wouldn't have bet cause compliance wouldn't let me bet, but uh, I would have made a case that there's a good chance we won't get to the signing date with either one of them, as opposed to getting the signing date with both of them. You know, and I probably would have taken one at that point. So to get those two, they're long, they're athletic, they have all the traits that good corners have. They're both pretty raw. They need to be developed, but we're pretty excited about those kids. Coach, um, if you uh, tweaked it all as as far as uh, I know, the first year was very different. But you know, coming along with progressive ones, have you tweaked anything in terms of of um, how you go about your recruiting business? Or the areas that you've uh, uh, gone no, out. No, we into. had we had a plan when we got here, and we didn't know if it was a good plan, but we thought about it, and it was recruit the Midwest first, make the Midwest our backyard. I know in state's important, but I also have recruited long enough to know that people that just try to get in state kids usually get fired. Like we're just going to recruit in state kids, okay? That's recruiting has totally changed because of huddle. Everybody can watch everybody. There's people that get plucked out of Ohio that 10 years ago they would never get plucked out of Ohio because you actually physically had to get to Ohio to recruit kids or get to wherever state. So everyone's more national because you have instant access to everybody's film and there's no sending out tapes and getting tapes in the mail or then sending out DVDs and getting DVD. And, you know, you can get kids without ever physically leaving your desk. So we basically said, hey, we're going we're gonna to put a circle around the Midwest and we have great ties in the Midwest. 
And if the kid is 15 minutes down the road in Kentucky, we're not going to count that against him that he's not Ohio kid. If he's from Richmond, Indiana, like Nate Trawick a year ago, we're not going to count that against him that he's not, quote, unquote, an Ohio kid. Or Indianapolis has been a great area for us. And I can get to the belt line on this side in about an hour and 15 minutes. So we've done very good. We got three Ohio kids. We got four Indiana kids. We got four Illinois kids. We got a Michigan kid. We got a Minnesota kid. We got a St. Louis kid. And again, the vast majority of our class and all those kids were offered first and committed first were Midwest kids. And then after we've exhausted the Midwest kids, we're going to get kids from anywhere. And Georgia is going to be our second home because it's drivable and it's great football. And we're going to do more in Kentucky and Tennessee on the way to Georgia because there's some good players on the way. And those are all drivable, un unofficial visits, which is our plan, which our plan has been great for us. You look at DeAndre Montgomery last year coming out of Georgia and He's a pretty special player, and he wasn't that highly recruited, you know, and we found him in a little place down there, and he's going to be – he's already a very good player for us. And then we'll keep looking until we find him. We won't settle. We never go to – like when the assistant coach someplace like, well, here's our A list, and then here's our B list, and if we can't get our A list, we'll go to the B list. We'll never go to our B list. We'll just keep looking for A's. And if we have to go to Houston to look for an A or D.C. to look for an A or Charlotte to look for an A or Florida to look for an A, we'll keep looking to get A players that fit when, what we want at Miami. So – it's been pretty good. We just had a junior day. We're starting on next year's class. We had 140 juniors and 139 are from the Midwest. 139 are from Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, St. Louis, Kentucky. They're all right in our backyard, and there's one kid or two kids from the state of Georgia on the whole list. So we're on them already for next year, and they're all the kids in our backyard, and we want all the Midwest kids to have the first opportunity to get a degree from Miami University and have a chance to play in our football program. Um, don't see any running backs on here. Uh, how do you feel about the, the situation with what you've got uh, as far as uh, up and coming running yeah, backs? Uh, we like our running backs. I think this year, in, in all four of the guys that play the most, and I like Spencer as a fifth year kid. Spencer fi found a nice little niche later in the year, kind of as a third down receiver blocker, and I still think Spencer can do things. But, you know, we played two redshirt freshmen, two true freshmen, and when we blocked, they were pretty darn good, and they were just freshmen, and I don't care. I've been doing this long enough to know, like, they're just scratching the surface. They're going to get a lot better. They're going to be a lot better this year, but they're going to be better next year, and they're going to be better the year after. We're, you know, and we got four of them, and they're different. You know, we got a couple speed guys, we got a couple bigger guys, so it's not like we got four of the same cat. You know, we got a couple of guys that, that can do stuff inside and outside. We got more, two guys that are more north and south guys, so we have some pretty good balance. And, you know, even early in the year at UC, we blocked them up pretty decent, and we ran pretty, you know, in the games that we got our kids – you know, gave them a chance as as freshmen. They were they were making plays, so uh, we're very comfortable. We said, hey, we're never going to turn on a great player at any position. You know, we were battling a great tailback today with Indiana. The kid chose Indiana. You know, he was committed to Michigan a few weeks ago. It's like, so you're never going to turn down that caliber of player. But we're we're very content with what we have with the five kids we got, and the fact that we didn't need to go out and find somebody unless we thought he was truly, truly, truly a big time difference maker. I know the first year you got here, one of the one of the issues was uh, getting into the red zone and being able to have somebody to, to pound it in and give you that uh, option of, of doing that. Uh, you think you're moving in, in that direction with some of the people that you have there, plus yeah. the improvement on the line. Yeah, and again, obviously it starts up front. But I think, I mean, with Zoe and, and Leonard, you have two bigger backs that, that are physical kids that can run. And, and Zoe had some – I mean, we were much better in short yards this year than we, we weren't perfect but we there's times even on third and fourth and short we just lined up and ran power and got the first down so I think Enzo's 220 plus pounds and, and, and Leonard's going to be in that category too and they are north and south guys that like to run with their pads out in front of them so I, I think we're good there um I just think there's there's many issues my first year that <laughs> third and fourth and short was just one of them <laughs> red zone was just one of them so but I think I, I like I like I like our combination of backs too if, if I had Four four young kids I like, but they're all the same. I've probably been looking, but I think we have good versatility with those young kids. I think they can do a lot of different jobs. And I, to me, I know I know they're just scratching the surface of the players they're going to become. And I, they did great things this year, but they were just freshmen. So, everybody good? Nope, oh, we got one more. Uh, you mentioned looking at tape. Uh, I did get a chance to take a little bit of uh, looking at uh, Noah. Was it was Ensky? Yep. Um, what can you say about him? Uh, the little bit that I saw looked uh, pretty decent. Yeah, I, I was I was uh, ecstatic when we got him. He was like the only 
non-BCS player to make the Elite 11 finals last summer. He's a pretty highly touted recruit. Coach Kelly did a great job. and. He, he's a Miami type kid. He's a great student. He believes in this university. He believes in what we're doing. Um, he's a very confident kid. I know everybody's excited about Gus and Billy, and we certainly are. But I know Noah's planning on trying to come in here and getting right in the middle of that mix. He's that confident player, and obviously played in a program that plays in big games every year. So he's he's very composed under pressure. He's very cerebral. So he's mature uh, for for a high school scene. He's a very mature kid. So I think he'll be able to close the gap. Uh, on Billy and Gus, I think he'll be more mature coming in than those kids. So I, I think he'll have an opportunity to get in there and fight fight that battle. All right, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.